Eric. I'd firstly like to thank Courtney Earl, our, our parliamentary assistant, and the regional group colleagues for their work on this motion. Minister, can I say it's bad form this morning that six of our speakers were speaking to a health minister here, not a member uh, from the Enterprise Department. And furthermore, that not one Fine Gael has taken part in this debate here today. It speaks volumes for the party who claims to be all about business in this country. There are three core asks within our motion. They are very simple. A reintroduction of the VAT rate to 9% for the food and hospitality sector. An extension of the 8.8% employer ceiling to wages up to €495 Euro per week. And finally, a government task force, as has been already outlined uh, by Deputy Nocton, to get to the heart of the matter of the challenges that are facing small business. And why are we calling for this? Well, it's because we recognise the increasing cost burden on small business, many of which are as a result of government policy. Government is the most material contributor to the cost of doing business in this country. Legal costs, insurance, costs of credit, local authority charges, energy, national minimum wage, tax compliant VAT, these are all set by government and they cannot be bid downwards by small business. Regarding VAT, which is a sales tax, we have one of the highest VAT rates on food amongst the EU countries. Most peer economies range in VAT from 5 to 9 per cent. Regarding wages, large enterprise of 250 workers or more, which exclude public servants, now make up 40 per cent of those employed in Ireland, while public servants make up an additional 18 per cent of the employed population. In this total grouping of working population, they have robust access to job security, pay and conditions, and stable revenue base is the norm for them. However, the other 42% of the working population are represented by the small to medium enterprise sector. And these businesses tend to suffer more fragmentation, more domestic competition, and more competition to margin retention. And to understand that, Minister, just look at how they grow. They often remain small simply because the market offering that they have is small. But nonetheless, they have a significant value in terms of community employment, the immunity and social offering, and cultural value that they create and offer to this country. And they are often, and I would say they're an intrinsic significant component of our tourism offer offering in the country. Many small businesses, as has been outlined, are facing rising costs, and they are not recoverable <coughs> from marginal increases. Therefore, these businesses are going under. <coughs> The minimum wage increase in employer PRSI addition has added €3,152 Euro to the annual cost of hiring a single employee at the minimum wage level. For many employers, this wage increase has also increased higher because of the relative effect to other employees. Employers accept that people must be paid an adequate wage. The problem for small business is that all other costs are increasing also, and business demand and customers' ability to pay is fine, Minister. These increased ca costs cannot be borne by small business. Our public-private sector pay gap is also one of the largest in Europe, and is, it is distorting the thinking of government that small micro-business can compete at pay levels benchmarked against high-paid civil servants and large FDI in the technology and pharmaceutical sectors. Government has to accept this policy reality, Minister, and in its policy formation. I again revisit the need for representation of the small business sector at the high-level group within LEAF, within the Labour Employment Economic Forum. I have asked for this repeatedly. I can clearly see the voice of small business is not being heard. Other points of note I would make to you, Minister. The Department of, uh, Department of Finance is advising that a skill net allocation can't go up this year because of fiscal spending rules. Meanwhile, there's one, more than 1.4 billion sitting in the National Training Fund. If the money can't be spent on training, then, Minister, then suspend the 1% training levy until it can. Also, businesses are paying 0.5% PRSI for the statutory redundancy fund since 1979, even though Joan Burton eliminated the statutory redundancy rebate. I'd ask again that government either reinstate the rebate or knock 0.5% off employer PRSI. And finally, some of the short-term SPI loans drawn down during COVID are maturing and borrowers need time to repay. I would ask that government take a similar position to this debt accrued uh, as they have done under the warehouse debt provisions. Finally, Minister, one of uh, the Fine Gael deputies said on radio in recent days with respect to our motion that we were being populist. And I would ask you, Minister, is it populist now? to listen to business in your constituencies who are crying out for recognition of, recognition of the challenges that they face. 
Is it populist for us as TDs to suggest that out, the other TDs outside of government might have policy ideas that reflect the needs of our constituents? Is it populist for us to outline that a significant proportion of our entrepreneurs, our young people, our own or business managers feel that Ireland is fast becoming some place where they are not encouraged to start, develop or maintain a viable small business? It is obvious to me and to many who are framing policy in this House that it looks that they have no experience to the costs or challenges involved in starting or maintaining a small business. They are obviously also oblivious to the impact of government-sponsored charges and levies. The asks in our motion today, Minister, are not populist. They are minimum required to show support to our small and medium business sectors. I would ask you to encourage government to listen intently and implement the supports we are calling for. But if it is the case that you cannot do that, Minister, I am asking for a vote to this House on this motion.